Hello and welcome. This is Master of None. Have you ever seen a pretty sweet clip art or a simple drawing and thought, man, I would like to turn it into a 3D object and print it out in my printer? Well, I know I did, so I uh, couldn't really find a video on YouTube, but I pieced together quite a few other videos and some research, and this is where I figured it out. So I thought, eh, I'll make a video and share it with you all. So I'll show you, to, in order to do this, you have to start with a vector file. So we will go to Chrome. Right, so there's two ways to do it. You can either add the extension to Google Chrome, or you can, let's go there. Bear with me, the internet's uh, kind of lagging here. So we go to SVG Converter, there we go. We have three options here. Um, I chose this one, this one seems to be the best. I already have it added, but you can add your extension. So what that does is uh, once you find, say your clip art, you can open it up which I clicked on this one. And there's the file. Basically just right click. And uh, once you have the extension added to Google Chrome, you'll have this option here where convert image to vector. We'll click on that. And it'll bring up this website here. I guess you could also just save the, uh, add this to your favorites, the URL, and then uh, go to here. And then you can save your image and then drop it right here. There's another way of doing this. So the simple way to do it is we choose the amount of colors. If you have the less colors, the better. And the reason is every time, every additional color you have, it's going to create another line for the vector. So the least amount is best. So you just go up here, choose how many colors you want. Choose palette, click the color. Oh, it's making me a lie. There we go. And do white, and then you generate, and it will create the SVG, and then you can download it and save it into your files. So this is what I've been doing. I don't know for a little while here, um, and it works. But when you pull it into Fusion 360, because each of those colors does create another vector, it makes it kind of hard to work with. So actually tonight, I went and um, downloaded Inkscape again. So they updated Inkscape, uh, and it looks a lot better, honestly. It was a little bit easier to use. I, I tried it before, and it was I, I had a hard time. But it's a free program. You can download it online. Okay, so here we are. I hit file, import. I already saved the file, so I went ahead and opened that. It's already open, so I'm not gonna mess with it. And then from over here, I got multicolor. Oh, sorry, you hit the right click, trace bitmap. That'll bring this up over here. I chose smooth stack. Um, brightness steps and then you can adjust this however you wish and this usually clears up I don't know if it's my computer being slow or what it is um, but hit apply and it will kind of draw a vector of that picture and then we can move it out of the way pretty cool so, what we can do is get rid of this, slide it over, and the next uh, important part is you want to right click it, and you want to break it apart, or ungroup, there we go, ungroup, and hopefully this will get rid of all the little tiny pieces that we're not going to want to pull over to Fusion 360. 
see it. It's basically still the same picture, but this is pretty minimal, but it still gets us what we'd want. Obviously, you can play with it. If you like one a little bit better than the other, go for it. Otherwise, you're just going to go ahead and grab all of those and delete them. Let's see if I can't under this. Uh, I can't. All right. So now that we have this, we will go to File, Save As. Let's go to. Let's see what I forgot to show y'all. Save As. I want to make sure down here the file type is a SVG. That I had to say to this skull too. Alright, now that that's done, we'll bring up Fusion 360. So we'll go ahead and open a new file here. We'll go start a new sketch. Here we'll go to insert, insert SVG. Now before you do this, if you know what size you want, I recommend going ahead and giving yourself a line. Uh, say we wanted to make it, uh, we'll say 100 millimeters high. This will give you the opportunity to, to use it as a scale later on. Let's go ahead and finish that. The reason why I that, finish that is so that you have another when you insert this SVG, you can easily delete that, that line. So, from the computer, skull 2. Alright, let's do that. It wants you to select the plane over here. So we'll select that one. Now that we have that line there, we'll go ahead and kind of move it around until we get the size that we want. If you do it now, it makes it a lot easier later on. So we'll call that good. It's close enough. Uh, I'm not trying to build something that's got a tight tolerance or anything. All right, so there's that. And then, like I said, we'll go ahead and delete that line. And here we are. All right. So uh, one cool thing about this I was saying earlier about using the Inkscape um, vector file compared to the the one you can do free converter online um, is if you look here, you see there's only one line, which makes it easier uh, here in a minute when we try to contour these to make a gap for the different colors. Um, so it also, yeah, it just makes it a lot easier, plain and simple. So we will start with extruding the outline. So let's go ahead and do that. So we will go to extrude. Uh, everything that we want to be the same color, we'll go ahead and extrude those items. So I want the eyes, the outline, and the nose. Uh, I'm just gonna go with uh, five millimeters. Whatever, whatever y'all wanna do. So, oops. so there's our black outline. Alright, so there's that. So now we are going to create a contour for all the red. Uh, what I've learned, I have a, a Prusa and K3S. And so what I do is I, I learned in my printer a 0 0.3 gap between materials or whatever it is, the tolerance. 0.3 seems to work really well for mine. You can play around with yours and, and figure that out. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is go to New sketch, contour. All right. so this is what's cool about the. I was telling you, it's nice with this. Is otherwise, if you use the other online version, you have to go around and click all of these little segments versus just doing it once. So I'm gonna make a point three offset and to the inside 
And I'll try to skip through a lot of these boring parts because, uh, quite honestly, my computer is really struggling tonight. I'll go ahead and do all the pieces that I want to be red. I'll put that offset in. So here, now's the time to clean some of this stuff up if you want. Actually, I should have done this earlier. Actually, here we go. Let's do this. Let's finish this sketch. That sketch. I'm going to clean that up because I don't like that. So I'm just going to go right here. Go like this. Because, you know, the printer's never going to print that. Too, too sharp, no point. And, and these ones might be okay. This one here might have a hard time. Let's go ahead and zoom that in. Trying to maintain that gap, same gap. Because it's going to be black on the back side, it won't be as obvious. But you can make that determination on your project. Those crazy lines, those are just showing gaps. Or the, uh, the 0.3 gap, no big deal. Actually, part of the project. If you want to delete the whole thing, as long as you break that opening there, that'll be fine. I'll go ahead and do it for you all. So now we've got all the gaps around here. What we're going to do is we're going to extrude these. But it's going to be a little bit of a trick. So because it won't allow me, these are separate like bodies, it won't let me put that point three around all of them at the same time. We're going to kind of trick the program. So let's select all of them. So we did point five. So what we're going to do for the interim, we are going to go, we'll say point, I'm sorry, uh, we'll do a 3.0, make sure it goes the right direction, which it's not going to, uh, I see that. We want to go inside, so we'll do minus 3. Minus computer. even easier. So we'll go to new component, hit OK. Alright. So you can kind of see we have the different colors going on there. And now the reason we had to trick the program is now we can come here on the back side. We will Create a new sketch. Point three. Now, 
see if it does the same thing it did to me earlier. And it did. Alright, so this is a good way to learn here. So if this happens, um, basically I want I want this gap in between. Oh shoot, made me a liar. Alright, so it actually worked. But here I'm gonna show you something that uh, you may run into, which you will run into, to be honest with you. So sometimes when you do these uh, outlines, the offsets, it won't close. It won't obviously won't be this obvious. Uh, it might be at one of these nodes or something like that. You can't tell. So one way to figure out where in the heck this problem is, we'll go ahead and do a straight line. It doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't matter at all. Um, and what this does is if you see, like, see when I go here, it's highlighted like that. It means it's a closed object and I can extrude it. Well, if you try to get in between here and it won't let you do it, um, like it seemed like it was earlier. So over here, see it's highlighting everything else compared to over here. All right, this means you have a, a break in the line, the contour somewhere. So get you a line and kind of work it. I might do here and then I'll zoom in. And if it see, see that's uh, closed, this one's closed. So I know that my issue is over on this way. So I'll just keep working that line until eventually, see it's not working there. And then maybe move this up to here. That's a really quick way of trying to figure out where your problem is. That's still working. Oh, see, there's my problem. So you can uh, figure out what it is. It's not always obvious like this. So you might have it might just be two nodes, and you can but you can narrow it down pretty quickly by using that method. All right, and get rid of my line. So because I was unable to create a contour around this from the other direction. What we're going to do is we're going to select that. We're actually going to cut through the other piece as long as my computer doesn't explode here. Hit OK. And now we have a gap. So that's the easy way to kind of trick the program. So I'm going to go ahead and do this one real quick. Not sure why you took me down there. So now we have a gap around everything else. And now, see earlier when we only did 0.3, had we went the full five, we would not be able to see the eyes to be able to create this contour in more time. But now that that's all done, we'll go over here. We'll edit the feature. And we'll go the minus five. Hit enter. And now we have a full object. So if you want to see your colors, well you can do it. Right click, go to appearance. And quite honestly, it doesn't really matter. Whatever you want to do. Uh, you can grab it and drag it. It'll be black. All my pieces I plan to make black. Oh my, 
And that was acted funny when I tried to do this earlier. Figured out how to do all this. And I can show in the beginning what I actually made her. Actually, I guess I probably already showed you. There we go. Not the best. So there's what it looks like. Pretty cool, huh? See, I must have screwed that up. But I'll come back and fix that when y'all aren't looking. So we have these different bodies. Um, and if you saw whenever I created all these extrusions, or when I extruded all the inside, the red, I actually saved it as a component. That comes into play here in one minute. I'm going to show you one more thing to do. Um, and then, actually, you know what? So we're going to go ahead and get rid of those so we don't have to see them. I'm going to choose the back, not that I think it really makes a difference, but I'm going to anyway. I'm going to create a sketch off the outline. Once again, do the offset. Alright, we're going to use zero for the offset because all we're going to do is fill in the back so that, and I'll get to that here in a minute, why we're going to do that. Actually, no, I'll tell you now. Alright, so the reason we're doing this is if you print all of your red pieces first, and then you print your black, you can stop your printer just before, so we put it face down, so this solid piece that we're doing right now will be facing up. You're going to stop your printer right before it starts to fill the back of this in. And you're going to put all of your pieces, all of your red pieces in. And as long as you're using the same material, say PLA, PETG, whatever you choose, it will actually bond to it. And then you're getting a two color project. You didn't have any waste and you don't have to use glue. It's great. We'll make that two millimeters. There it is. Bring it over here. And then there it is. So now you're probably uh, wondering how do I get this to create an STL. Too easy. Uh, so because I made these all one component, it made it super easy. Um, all you gotta do is right click, save as mesh, come over here to, you want this option right here, this format, hit OK and save it to wherever you save your STLs. Um, and then that'll save your red. Black. I have it's one body now since we've uh, just bonded them all together. Uh, from the back, same thing, save as mesh, save that. Um, if for whatever reason you don't do the way I did it, uh, you're going to have a whole bunch of bodies here. Um, and you can select multiple bodies and then create a component. And then that's uh, another way to do it. And actually, let me see. All right, so in the event that you don't do it the way I did it, and you come over here and you have a whole bunch of bodies, what you can do is get rid of the ones, basically hide the ones you don't want. Um, so all you see is whatever color it is going to be. You can go to modify and combine, select your bodies, you can do it over here, or you can select them here. Make sure you have join and have this new component selected and it'll do the exact same thing. If you have all individual ones and you try to save the, you can't save all those as 
one mesh. This is the only way to do it. <clears throat> um, so this is kind of like the, I want to call it the basic way to do things. Um, what's cool then is you can go around, uh, once you have this part, you can start adding things. Say you wanted to make like an L here. I mean, it'd be super easy, so. You could hang it on, hang it on a shelf. You can easily just build a, do that. There you go. Now you can hang it on a shelf. Or you can put this on something else. Once you get the basics of figuring out how to make this work, then you can add a bunch of other pieces. And depending on how it works out, if you can't print it all as one, it's not a big deal. You always have the option to just glue them in. So if the print orientation doesn't make sense, just print all your different colors and throw them in with some glue. Not a big deal. But I hope you uh, enjoyed this video. If you would, please like and subscribe. I'm gonna actually start making some more videos and um, start making some more videos for y'all. And uh, I plan on making another tutorial the way I made my wife's uh, headset holder. Thank you all. Bye.